Well, let's get more on this now with Dr. John Nkengosong, who's the director of the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. He joins us now from Addis Ababa. Good to have you with us on the news hour, doctor. Firstly, can you tell us more about the progress that's being made in terms of delivering COVID-19 vaccines across Africa? No, thank you for the opportunity to contribute in your program. Uh, the continent was very fortunate to begin to receive uh, the first doses from COVAX about a few weeks ago. And unfortunately, the situation in India occurred. And as we speak, uh, most countries in Africa have exhausted the use of their first doses that uh, arrived from the Serum Institute, mainly uh, the AstraZeneca vaccines. And now they really are at a loss as to when the next doses will, will be available. So that puts our vaccination program in a very unpredictable situation, which is uh, very, very unfortunate. We know what to do with this uh, crisis. We know it, we have the tools to, to resolve the problem. But unfortunately, the world has not uh, acted in complete uh, solidarity and cooperation. Yes, as you say, the world's biggest manufacturer of vaccines is the Serum Institute, which is based in India, which, as we know, is grappling with a deadly second surge of the coronavirus there. So it really is needing all of the vaccine supply for its own population. But is there a workaround for the, the halting of uh, vaccine exports from India? Are, are there solutions to how we can get more vaccines to Africa? Yeah, we, we at the African Union have actually uh, launched an initiative which you are probably aware called the African Vaccine Acquisition Task Team and have signed a contract with the Johnson & Johnson for over 220 million doses of vaccines. But those vaccines will only begin to arrive the continent towards the third uh, quarter of, of this year. Uh, so that gives us at least two months where countries cannot actually predict uh, where to get vaccines. And we are really hoping that uh, the solution will come from countries that already have these vaccines and can redistribute the vaccines in a timely manner. And as I said earlier, we find ourselves in a moral uh, dilemma where we know exactly what to do. Uh, we have the tools available, in this case vaccines, but uh, there's a really um, lack of appropriate cooperation to make this happen. Yes, and as we heard in Sarah's story as well, there is a possible solution in the local production of these COVID-19 vaccines. We know that uh, South African President Cyril Ramaphosa has suggested the idea of waiving vaccine patents so that uh, countries in Africa can produce some of these injections. It's an idea that uh, the US President Joe Biden says that he supports as well. Do we have any progress on that? And how likely is it that by temporarily waiving uh, vaccine patents that perhaps we can fix this shortage on the African continent? I think the key word there is a temporary uh, suspension of the waiver so that we can collectively expand the capacity and capabilities of producing vaccines, uh, uh, not just in Africa, but across the world, so that uh, together we can uh, bring this pandemic under control quickly. We need vaccines at scale, and we need to vaccinate at speed in order to be ahead of this pandemic. But at the current speed at which we are going, and with the continent of Africa, as we speak today, only able to have vaccinated less than 1.5% of its population, I don't think we are in the right trajectory there. So the, the, the measures taken by the United States government and the, 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 the support and leadership role of the government of South Africa uh, uh, leading to the waiving of that patent situation is critical. And the African Union has endorsed that position as well. I think this is the period to show that we can, at the moment of crisis, uh, uh, do the right thing, do the courageous things and not just the easy things. Now, I just came across quite an interesting statistic from the World Economic Forum. It says about eight doses per 1,000 people have been administered in sub-Saharan Africa compared with 150 doses uh, around the world per 1,000 people. I mean, there is this huge contrast between the two. Can you tell us which countries in Africa at the moment are in the most urgent need of COVID-19 vaccines? I, I would say that most countries are in most urgent need of these vaccines. Our continental target was to be able to vaccinate at least 60% of our population. 
And of that number, our target and strategy was to immunize at least 30% of the population by the end of the year. Uh, but, but where we find ourselves today as a continent doesn't allow us to be able to uh, project and predict how to get to that 30% uh, or 60% by the end of uh, this year or next year, respectively. So countries like Morocco are doing well, Seychelles, uh, but most countries are really uh, struggling. Uh, this is a continent of 55 member states uh, made up of 1.2 billion people. And uh, having vaccinated less than 1.5 percent of the population is really uh, uh, very concerning and troubling. Okay, Dr. John Nkenga Song, thank you so much again for joining us on the News Hour and sharing us your insights. We appreciate.